What do we know at this point? Well, the missile probably would have flown for about an hour, and that uh, is consistent with the North Korean ICBM. Um, we don't have it officially out yet, but the flight time indicates that it's an ICBM lofted on a uh, launched on a lofted trajectory, which is kind of like straight up and a little bit down. Um, and if so, it'd be the fifth of the year. And the launch comes as Kim Jong-un, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, is heading into a major policy-setting meeting at the end of the year. And it's a show of strength to his, uh, the cadres in his ruling party and to his people that the nuclear program is making progress, that it's, uh, it needs to be further advanced for the following year, and that the sacrifices that the people and the economy are making for this are justified in North Korea's propaganda, in the way that North Korea's propaganda apparatus will frame it. Well, we also have uh, this launch coinciding with talks between the US and Korea. How is this launch going to sharpen the focus of that? Well, the, the talks were uh, over the weekend uh, in Washington of the nuclear consultative group. This, um, this, the launches, uh, there was a short-range ballistic missile launch Sunday night, are more in response to those talks. These talks are used to deter North Korea from using nuclear weapons. And what the U.S. has done is it sent its military assets to the region in a show of force that um, demonstrate if North Korea were to try to launch an attack, there would be an overwhelming response. The most recent part of this, the show of deterrence, is a U.S. nuclear power submarine that arrived in the South Korean port of Busan over the weekend. Uh, we're seeing aircraft carrier groups that are coming. The U.S. is working with South Korea as well as Japan on drills to intercept North Korean missiles. So it's all part of this, uh, this emergence of uh, talks and action that are taking head, taking head on North Korea's nuclear threats. John, we know that usually external geopolitical tensions do help leaders to shore up their domestic support. This would have come at a very good time for Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, whose support rating continues to fall despite a reshuffle of his cabinet. Exactly. And his uh, support rate is now the lowest it's been in about more than a decade for a Japanese leader. Um, what this has done, uh, he's facing, his ruling party is facing some uh, financing scandals. Four um, ministers, about a fifth of the cabinet, uh, stepped down last week. Kishida is trying to uh, restore confidence in his government. And it's a difficult thing to do. What this may do is speed up the clock for him to be replaced. The ruling Liberal Democratic Party has an election in September for its leadership, and Kishida may go before that. A majority of the public in public surveys show that they want him to go before that. And a short-serving prime minister is more the rule than the exception in Japan. And Kishida has served more than two years, making him one of the longer ruling politicians since the start of this century.